Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Color a Dinosaur, brought to us by Farsight Technologies and Virgin Interactive Games. Color a Dinosaur is a family-friendly game that basically is just a coloring book for kids. It's for young ages, and the game is released really late though in the NES life cycle, and because of that it's become a really rare game, going for upwards of $150, $200, or more dollars. When I set off to do my Play It Through series, I had a goal in mind of completing, or at least doing a video for every single NES game ever, so even though Color a Dinosaur really isn't a whole lot to show, it still counts towards working on that goal. So here we go with Color a Dinosaur for the NES. The game starts off with a title sequence which slowly shows you a dinosaur being colored in. You then get to select from one of 16 different pictures that you can then color in. Each one of these pictures has a kind of derpy looking dinosaur in them. Uh, and then you get the option once you've selected which picture, you then get to start putting down your paint. The game has a few different palettes of colors that you're able to use, with a couple of variants such as the ones that flash for a few of the colors, leading to some interesting combinations. Because of such a limited palette of colors available on the NES, it's interesting that they decided to go with so many weird kind of patterns and try to pad out the palette so it seems like there's more colors involved than what there actually is. The controls are really kind of non-intuitive, as you have to actually like hard select where you want to go next. The pointer just snaps directly to a spot that's able to be colored in instead of having a free flow cursor. This unfortunately sometimes leads to spots where it's unable to really tell if you're on the exact spot you want or on the spot next to it. But since things are so basic of just moving that and then pressing the button to fill in whichever color you currently have selected, it's very easy to get done what you want to. There's of course a ton of limitations, everything going on here. There's only so many colors, and you can only have one palette at once. When you switch up the palette, it will automatically switch the complete colors of the dinosaur that you are currently working on. Unfortunately though, there's no like mini games or anything extra, and Mario Paint came out not long after this game was released, and that game absolutely of course blows this one out of the water. Granted, it's on the Super Nintendo, it had a special mouse controller and the like, uh, so you can't really fault Color Dinosaur for not being that great of an experience for what it's trying to do on the NES, uh, but at the same time you have to kind of wonder why this game even did end up getting made. While there isn't a ton of interesting facts really about the history of Color a Dinosaur, the company that did develop it, Farsight Technologies, did go on to create several other sports titles, and also were responsible for the relatively poor Scarface game that came out on the PlayStation 2. The founder of Farsight, Jay Ubernolte, is actually currently a California State Assembly member, and of course the legendary Tommy Tallarico worked on the soundtrack for this game, and of course he's well known for a lot of Virgin Interactive games, including an all-time classic in the original Earthworm Jim. Tommy Tallarico has done so many great soundtracks over the years, or contributed to great soundtracks. One song in particular I highly recommend looking up if you ever get an opportunity is the Madden NFL 95 Pause music. It's not a whole lot of music on that soundtrack to begin with, mostly just at the pause screen, but it's a great song nonetheless. You may have noticed me getting kind of sidetracked here, but that's basically what you need to do if you're going to be playing more than a few minutes of Color a Dinosaur. I think even young kids probably would have gotten pretty bored with this relatively quickly with so few options, and especially with how long it, the game takes to paint a lot of the sections. It's weird that like a large amount of it will instantly come into color, and then the rest of it has to slowly be filled in. Like the game didn't know if it wanted to do it instantly, or decided to do it really, really painstakingly slow.
Just for fun, I'm gonna paint one more dinosaur before we call things quit here. Like I said, a lot of the pictures are kind of funny looking, and the game is mildly amusing just for what it is, but there really just is nothing to it here. One of the game's testers, Noah Tool, would go on to be quality assurance for a lot of other games during this era, but later would actually get to work as a game designer, working on the likes of The Da Vinci Code based on the film, and Silent Hill Homecoming for the PSP. Now when we switch the palette to one of the flashing colors, this is where things become really obnoxious, and I apologize to anybody who's light sensitive, you may not want to directly stare at it, because I'm going to cover the screen with quite a bit of flashing things, just to show how blinding uh, this game can potentially end up getting. Now to kind of like put the finishing touches, we're going to fill in this little circle, and then the background, and this is what's going to really kind of send this thing over the top to kind of finish us up. Uh, like I said, don't stare directly at it, or stare directly at it, whichever one you really feel like doing. If you want to blind yourself, just stare directly at the center of the screen, and make sure your monitor is quite a large one. So there you have it, Color a Dinosaur for the NES. It's not really that bad of a game considering what it is, but it's way overpriced. Definitely not worth what it goes for nowadays on the secondary market. I doubt we're ever going to see any kind of re-release of the game. So it's one of those anomalies that's not worth tracking down. Just know that it exists, you can kind of laugh at it, but you never, never spend the money or really even bother playing it yourself. But with that, guys, I'm going to wrap up this episode of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.